hello and uh, welcome to the second lecture of uh, the 12th module. Uh, so, in our uh, last lecture, uh, uh, we have discussed uh, how to determine the transverse deflection of a laminate and uh, we understood that uh, uh, using classical lamination theory, we have also introduced the uh, in addition to the in plane force and moment resultant. Uh, in order to determine the transverse deflection, we have also introduced uh, the so called uh, uh, transverse shear resultant. Okay. But uh, even in the last uh, uh, lecture, where we uh, found out how to determine the transverse deflection of a laminate, we actually restrict our discussion to only uh, symmetric and specially orthotropic laminates. Okay. And of course, with uh, the inherent assumptions of classical lamination theory. However, uh, even though we have uh, restricted our discussion to uh, uh, symmetric, specially orthotropic and rectangular uh, laminated plate, the same could actually be used for other more general laminates. Okay. Now, you will appreciate that laminated composite structures may also be subjected to axial compression. Okay. And we all know whenever there is an axial compression, uh, uh, the uh, slender structures actually experiences buckling. Therefore, it is important uh, to understand the response of such laminated plates under axial compression and more importantly to determine the buckling load. We all know that uh, whenever a, a, any, any uh, specially we, we understood the Coulomb buckling in our, in our undergraduate, all of you have studied uh, the Coulomb buckling. That means, when the compression load actually exceeds certain critical value axial compression load exceeds certain critical value which we used to call critical buckling load, then the column used to go to instability. Similarly, here also for a laminated composite plate, we need to actually determine what is the buckling load. Okay. Uh, in addition, uh, laminated composite structures may also be subjected to vibration okay. uh, and therefore, it is important to know the response of such structures to vibration. Okay. Again, I mean in this lecture, we shall actually restrict our discussions only to the buckling response and free vibration response of a simply supported specially orthotropic symmetric rectangular laminate. Because already we have mentioned uh, that in the objective of this lecture, it is not possible to cover all this in details uh, like uh, if we have to study buckling of uh, laminated composite plate it itself will uh, uh, have a I mean uh, we will have to take maybe at least four or five uh, classes. Okay. But the objective here has been to understand uh, the basically uh, how the buckling load is actually influenced by different uh, properties in a laminated composite plate. Similarly, uh, we will restrict our uh, vibration response of laminated composite plates only to free vibration because it is important to understand uh, that uh, when a, a laminated plate or for that matter any component when it is subjected to vibrations we always try to see that the forcing frequency is uh, away from far away from the natural frequency otherwise resonance occurs. Therefore, we will restrict our discussions to uh, uh, I mean only to determination of natural frequency of, uh, uh, of laminated composite plates uh, and so that we understand what are the different important parameters which actually influence uh, the, the natural frequencies of such laminated composite plates. Okay. Therefore, to start with uh, let us uh, first see the buckling of a laminated plates in brief. Uh, we know uh, when a column buckles, it actually deforms in the lateral direction. Okay. So, coming to buckling of uh, 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 laminated plates, uh, we all know that when a column actually buckles, it deforms in the lateral direction. We have studied in our undergraduate that if we have a slender column, which is of course initially straight, uh, then if it is subjected to axial compression, it bends in the transverse direction and if the load is uh, so high that this goes to instability. That means, without any increasing load further, this transverse deflection keeps on increasing. That is why it is called instability and that load is called critical buckling load. Similarly, if we have a plate which is subjected to say rectangular plate which is subjected to axial compression, the plate will also uh, deflect in the transverse direction okay. and the initial flat configuration will actually go to a non-flat configuration and if the load is so high that it 
it, it actually this, it goes to instability that means without any further increasing load that transverse deflection keeps on increasing. Okay? Now, the difference is that uh, when a plate buckles, the deformation transverse to the plane of the plate has two dimensional wave in nature with multiple sine waves. This is what we mean. That means, suppose if you have a plate, I uh, mean the edges could be have defined bound, could have defined boundary conditions, maybe simply supported, maybe clamped. Okay? Now, suppose this is a plate which is subjected to axial load like this. Therefore, it will deflect in this plane, suppose as well as it will also deflect in this plane. Okay? Now, this could be actually represented by uh, two dimensional uh, multiple sine waves as, as it is shown in the figure. Okay? That of course, depends upon the what is the actual load. Also, uh, the load deformation behavior of a plate is uh, I mean more complicated compared to that of a column. Okay? Uh, again, uh, we will restrict our discussions to the buckling response of a simply supported, specially orthotropic, symmetric rectangular sub laminate subjected to uniform in plane axial compression. Okay? That means, uh, we will restrict our discussion only to a rectangular plate. A plate could be also a circular plate, okay? but uh, uh, I mean of course, the response will be different. Now, we are restricting our, our discussions to only a rectangular plate. Also, we are considering a laminate which is specially orthotropic. That means, it is only 0 90 uh, layers, meaning that there is no shear extension coupling and symmetric that means, there is no bending extension coupling. Okay? However, the same principle could also be applied for a general laminate. Now, let us consider a laminate uh, subjected to all in plane forces. That means, uh, all the in plane forces n x, n y, n x y and then moments m x, m y, m x y and transverse load. Okay? Now, if we consider uh, suppose we have a general laminate and uh, we are representing this by means of its mid plane. We have done so in classical lamination theory. Suppose this is our x, this is y, okay, which is fixed at the mid surface and this is z okay, and it is subjected to all kinds of uh, in plane force and moment resultants, resultants and, and uh, like uh, transverse uniformly distributed load. Okay. Now, if you consider a small element from this laminate which is length is say d x with this d y okay? and then this is the on this small element these are the forces okay? by just simple uh, I mean Taylor's uh, expansion. Suppose here it is n x at a distance of d x it will be n x plus d del n x d x into uh, d x. Similarly, all other okay? uh, because these are all continuous variable. Okay? Okay? But here, the same thing we have done in case of uh, transverse deflection also, but the difference here is out of plane components of the in plane forces, we did not consider that earlier. Here, these are taken into account in writing the equilibrium equations. What does it mean? It means, like suppose we have, uh, suppose this is the plate. Okay? say this is the plate, okay, this is x, this is y, this is z. Now, under this load, the plate will deflect like this. It also deflects in the other plane. Okay. Now, suppose if we only see a section in the x z plane, Okay. Suppose we consider only x z plane, maybe this is how it is. Okay. So, if we consider a small element of length d x in the x z plane, it is actually experiencing maybe this is n x and this is at a distance of a del x, this is del n x d x del x into d x. 
Okay. Similarly, if you consider a uh, y z plane, yeah, y z plane, you may get like this is n y and this is n y plus del n y del y d y. If you consider the x y plane, suppose we look from top x y. So, same the elemental length d x d y, we can see this. So, this is subjected to uh, n x and here it is I mean n x plus del n x del x d x. Similarly, n y then n y plus del n y del y d y. Then you have this n x y then you have n x y and then incremented sorry incremented n x y plus del n x y del y d y and similarly here it is n x y plus del n x y del x d x. So, what is uh, important here is that out of plane component of in plane forces as considered means that means now n x is not along x, it is making certain angle with x axis. Okay. Similarly, n y is not no more along y, it is making certain angle. What is that angle that we have shown? That rotation is del w del x, del w del y. Okay. Therefore, now because it is no more a very small uh, deflection, therefore, we have to take the component of this along, uh, I mean, for equilibrium equations. Therefore, when we sum all the forces along z directions, the component of n x along z is there, component of n x plus this along z is there and this is nothing but this n x plus del n x d x to d x is the force, this is actually acting on, uh, on this d y, this is a small segment del y, okay, d y, this is the force and the component of this is actually sin theta th th for small theta, it is sin theta is theta. Similarly, for n x, it is actually n x into d x, uh, sorry, n x into d y is the force and the component along z is this. So, similarly, we have taken all the components and we have considered the equilibrium along z, that means sum of all the forces along z direction is to be 0 and we get this equation. Okay. So, now, in this equation, because we have considered a very small uh, element where d x and d y is very, very small. Therefore, the product terms could be neglected. That means, d x into d x almost equal to 0. Similarly, d y d y is almost equal to 0 and when we do so, we get the simplified equation 1. Okay. You can see that uh, the same equation we got in the case of transverse deflection, but only thing these terms are not there because in the z direction, the components were neglected. Component of n x, n y, n x y along the z was neglected, but here we have not neglected that. Therefore, they appear as coefficients of the curvatures. Okay? And already uh, uh, we have, uh, I am not, I have not included here, right? We have already done that. If we take moment about, uh, if we consider the moment about moment equilibrium about uh, y axis. this leads us to this equation. Similarly, if we consider moment about x axis equilibrium, this leads us the, to this equation. This we have done number of times. Okay. You can just refer to this figure and this we have done in the case of transverse deflection. So, I am not, not repeating here and when we put these equations uh, like the, uh, please note that q x, q y are the transverse shear resultant. Therefore, they, those could be expressed in terms of the in plane moments m x, m y and m uh, m x y. So, when we put these relations in equation number 1, that means using 2 and 3 in equation number 1, we have this equation number 4. Okay? Now, uh, 
using classical lamination theory from classical lamination theory we have the relationship between the in force uh, I mean in plane force and moment resultants with the mid surface strains and curvatures by so called ABBD matrix of the laminate and uh, therefore, we can actually express this n x n y n x y m x m y m x y in terms of the mid surface strains and curvatures. Okay. Again using the strain displacements and curvature displacement relationship we have understood this in details in when we have done classical lamination theory. Therefore, when we put this finally, we could write this n x n y n x y m x m y m x y that means in plane force and moment resultants in terms of the displacements okay? and of course, uh, with the elements of ABBD matrix and we get this equation number 7. Okay? And now, this uh, equation number 7 where we could express n x n y n x y m x m y m x y in terms of the displacement components. Please note here that we have been using w naught and w the same because you know in classical lamination theory we have uh, one of the assumptions was that w does not depend upon the that is it is independent of the thickness and therefore the transverse that uh, I mean jet component of displacement is independent of jet therefore mid surface displacement and displacement at any other uh, point along the thickness is same therefore w is equal to w naught you can see here this is w naught but we have used here as w is the same thing. Okay. So, if we use this uh, uh, n x n y n x y m x m y m x y in terms of the displacement and then uh, put them in equation number 4 I mean uh, use m x m y m x y uh, in terms of the displacement then we get this equation. Okay. We get these equations. Okay. You can see this equation number 8 is actually uh, how we obtain this equation number 8 this is uh, as a consequence of force equilibrium in the jet directions, but you can see that this is a coupled equation where u naught v naught are also there. Okay. Now, uh, for a specially orthotropic and symmetric laminate, if the laminate is symmetric then B i j all the elements of bending extension coupling B are 0 as well as if it is specially orthotropic. A16, A26, D16, D26, this uh, the, the basically the shear extension and twisting bending coupling are also coupling terms are also 0. Therefore, this equation number 8 actually simplified to this okay? equation number 9. Okay? How? Because we are actually uh, dealing with uh, the uh, buckling of a plate, therefore, we consider that only Nx is acting. That means, you have a plate where we have only axial compression is there, other forces are not there. Therefore, this is n x is equal to minus n, n y, n x y and uh, this q x y which is that uniformly distributed transverse load are 0 and therefore, we get this equation number 9 from 8. So, in 8 we put all the b i j as 0, a 1 6, a 2 6, a d 1 6, d 2 6 as 0 as well as I mean of course, uh, in equation number 8 there is no a, a 1 I mean no terms involving a 1 because it is only in the j direction, but for complete for completeness we have written that for a for a uh, uh, for a special orthotropic laminar these terms are 0, but here actually we use d 1 6 and d 2 6 as 0 okay? and then n x equal to uh, minus n and all the b terms elements of b matrix are 0 we get this equation number 9. Okay? Now, this equation number 9 uh, this is the equation number 9 we have rewritten this. Uh, this is actually for a symmetric special orthotropic rectangular laminate okay, subjected to n x equal to minus n that means, axial compression load the governing differential equation is this equation number 9. Okay. Now, for a simply supported boundary conditions at the edges I think we have discussed that while discussing transverse uh, you know. Uh, deflection of laminate. So, I have not written it here again uh, simply supported in suppose this is the plate which is a length and width is b. Okay. This is our x axis, this is our y axis, 
Okay. Therefore, uh, simply separated condition means at x equal to 0 and x equal to a at both the edges, there cannot be any w, w is equal to 0 that means transverse uh, uh, displacement is 0 as well as there is no moment because it is simply supported therefore, m x equal to 0. Also at y is equal to 0 and at y is equal to b, similarly w is equal to 0, m y is equal to 0. We have four conditions, these are fourth order differential equations. So, so for a simply supported boundary conditions, we take the, we, we assume the solution of this nature, okay, double sign series, so that it satisfies these boundary conditions okay. and we, when we put this, we obtain this equation number 11, where r is equal to ratio of length to the width of the plate a by b is known as the aspect ratio of the plate sometimes. Now, in this equation 11, one of the solution is of course, w m n is equal to 0, which, which is trivial that means, there is no uh, deflection which is trivial. Therefore, for non-trivial solution, we get this. Okay. Now, this is the buckling load okay. and you can see that it is actually a function of m and n. We have to start with, we have discussed what is m and n, number of half sine wave along the x and y direction. That means, a plate depending upon the load and the support, it might buckle like this okay, or it might buckle like this. Okay. Similarly, in the, uh, in the y plane also it might buckle like this or it might buckle like this. Okay. So, this is the number of half sine wave along x and y directions. Okay. So, naturally, the smallest buckling load you can see in this that uh, it, it, it is linear with n, uh, I mean not linear, it is, it is, I mean it increases with n. Okay. Therefore, if n is the n is equal to 1, this is the smallest buckling load and the least value corresponding to a particular m can be determined knowing of course, d i j, I mean d 1 1, d 1 2 and d 2 2 and d 6 6. Okay. And we know what, what, what are those values d 1 1, d 1 2, d 2 2, d 6 6 for a laminate, those could be determined knowing the uh, the stacking sequence of the laminate and the individual uh, the reduced transform stiffness matrix of the constituent lamina okay so for a laminate we know this so knowing this and knowing r we can actually find out wh what is the uh, the smallest buckling load corresponding to n is equal to 1 and of course it will differ with m okay and the smallest value of n for defined m is however not very obvious that means uh, it is not that n is equal to 1, m is equal to 1 is the smallest or it will continue like this, m is equal to 1, n is equal to 1, m is equal to 2 is the next uh, higher, not like that. It is not very obvious. Okay. So, this is the uh, the smallest value of buckling load. Okay. What is important here to note that the buckling load actually depends upon all the components of bending stiffnesses d 1 1, d 2 2, d 1 2, d 6 6. Therefore, depending upon the stacking sequence of the laminate, okay, uh, it will be different. Okay, it will be because D, the elements of D matrix actually uh, actually depends not only on the in, uh, uh, the properties of the constituent lamina, but also their stacking sequence. So uh, this is how we calculate the uh, buckling load. Now uh, let us uh, try to understand the significance of this equation. Now as we have seen already, that uh, the smallest buckling load is a function of this elements of D matrix, of course, the plate dimension r that means uh, aspect ratio. Okay. Now, let us try to understand that uh, suppose we have two laminate, one is all 0 degree layer. Okay. We have total 16 0 degree layer and this is subjected to axial load and in another case identical dimension, identical thickness, identical material, but the stacking sequence is different. Okay. They are it is half of them are 0 degree and half of them are 90 degree. 
Okay. So, this is 0 16, this is 0 4, I think you understand if you expand this, this will be a 16 layer cross ply special orthotropic laminate. Okay. Now, in which case we expect the buckling load to be higher? That means, from the design point of view, we always try to see that the buckling load is higher so that it can it does not go to instability. Higher the buckling load, better it is. Okay. Now, when it buckles, so naturally bending stiffness uh, I mean decides what is the buckling load. If you remember that for column buckling, we had that uh, critical buckling load for uh, to both n p into our pi square e i by l square for a column. Okay. Now, for a given l, more is e i that is the bending stiffness, more is the you know uh, buckling load. Now, we may we may tempted to think that this will have higher buckling load because all are 0 degree, but it is not so. You can see now that because it is not only d 1 1, it is also decided by d 2 2, okay, d 1 2 d 6 6. Therefore, you can try to find out using this formula for which and you will see that buckling load for this will be higher. Why I have uh, discussed this is that it is important to understand that for a plate of course, uh, because it is subjected to boundary conditions at the edge, okay, the buckling load is actually a functions of a, a function of all these stiffnesses d 1 1, d 1 2, d 2 2, d 6 6. Therefore, I mean you cannot uh, it is not very uh, straightforward to tell that wherever d 1 1 is high the buckling load will be higher. Okay. So, this is how uh, we can we calculate the buckling load for a uh, uh, laminate. Of course, we have restricted to rectangular um, symmetric specially orthotropic laminate but the same principle could actually be applied to uh, other types of laminates, but the equations will be more involved especially when they are coupled. It is uh, not very easy to solve those uh, equations analytically, but of course, numerical methods are there by which uh, those could be solved, but the principle remains same. Okay. So, now uh, next uh, we will consider the free vibration basically transverse vibration of laminated plate. Okay. Now, laminated composite uh, structures are also subjected to vibrations. Okay. It is important to understand the response of such laminates under free and forced vibrations. Now, free vibration studies are important to determine the natural frequencies for such structures, so that these frequencies could be avoided during loading. That means, whenever there is a force vibration, uh, uh, any component which is experiencing uh, uh, I mean uh, vibration load. We, we, we ensured that the forcing frequency is far away from the natural frequency to avoid resonance. Therefore, it is important to design a laminated composite structures in such a way that its natural frequencies are not near to the forcing frequencies. Uh, the discussion in this lecture is again restricted to free vibration of simply supported rectangular laminated plate of course, uh, symmetric and specially orthotropic. Okay. Uh, so, it is important the objective here has been that uh, that what are the factors which actually influence the influence the natural uh, frequency okay and therefore in designing a laminate we must uh, uh, we must know how to design a laminate for a required uh, i mean range of uh, 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 so that you can avoid the uh, natural frequency of a particular uh, order okay uh, say so free vibration of uh, laminated plate again uh, uh, we consider a rectangular laminated plate with length A and width B and subjected to all uh, generalized loading in plane force and moment resultants as well as uh, as well as the transverse uniformly distributed load which you have also considered for transverse deflection. Okay. Uh, so, this is considering a uh, very small element uh, from this okay, from this laminate whose length is d x and width is d y width is d y and these are the in plane forces moments and transverse result shear stress resultant. Okay. Now, we have done this earlier I mean uh, only thing is that here uh, we have to uh, you know here we have to 
consider the uh, uh, the uh, the inertia force. Okay, therefore here the sum of uh, the if we consider the equilibrium along x direction. So earlier we have considered f x equal to zero. Here we have considered this is actually uh, the inertial force. Like you know that m x double dot. Now here rho naught is the mass per unit area. Okay, therefore this is actually uh, for the small element this is actually uh, into d x d y rho naught into d x d y is the mass, and then this is the acceleration. Okay, u naught double dot. Okay, so if we uh, uh, when we do this and neglecting uh, the small smaller terms d x d x d y d y product terms to be 0, we get this equation. Okay. Similarly, considering the equilibrium in y direction, again this is actually the mass is rho naught into d x into d y. Please note that rho is the density and rho naught is the mass per unit area because you will appreciate that this force uh, is actually force per unit length. Okay. Therefore, it is rho naught d x d y is the mass per unit length and uh, 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 this is the you know f y is the uh, this is v naught actually this is actually v naught okay. acceleration in the in the in the y direction. Okay. So, when we do that we get this as the equation okay. again neglecting the higher I mean product of the small terms we get these equations. Uh, we got we, we obtained the similar equations in the case of transverse uh, deflection also, but only thing this term was not there. Okay. Similarly, considering uh, the uh, so I think this is again repeated. So when we consider this force equilibrium along x, we get this. Just for completeness, I have written it again. When we consider force equilibrium along y, is v naught we get this and similarly when you consider the force equilibrium along z we get this equations so so we get equations 1 2 3 from the equilibrium along x y and z okay and we also have done that that when we take the moment equilibrium along x axis we land up with this equation when we consider moment equilibrium about y axis we land up with this equation okay so we get this uh, 4 and 5 considering moment equilibrium along y and x axis respectively. So, uh, using this uh, 4 and 5 in equation number 3 that means, uh, in equation number 3 uh, this, sh this shear stress resultant q x and q y are actually uh, replaced by this 4 and 5 where this q x and q y are expressed in terms of m x m y and m x y and when we put this we get, get this equations. Now, from classical lamination theory, we have from classical lamination theory, we have the uh, force and moment resultant expressed in terms of mid surface strains and curvatures and then uh, using this along with the strain displacement and curvature displacement relationship, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, we have done that already. Therefore, we can get the force and moment resultants in terms of the displacements okay mid surface displacement u not v not and w not again note here that w is equal to w not because w does not depend upon the z direction it is uh, throughout the thickness it is same therefore mid surface displacement is same as the displacement in any other point along the thickness and then uh, putting this uh, uh, this values of nx ny nxy mx my mxy in equation number 1 uh, so, you can see what is equation number 1, uh, yeah this is actually was equation number 1 and this is equation number 2 that means uh, equilibrium uh, along x, equilibrium force equilibrium along y. So, putting this in equation number 1, uh, we get this equation number 11. Okay. Similarly, putting uh, this equation number, this, these relations in 10 that means the force and moment resultant in some in terms of displacement when we put this in equation number 2 we get equation number 12 and then uh, expressing the uh, force and moment resultant uh, in terms of displacement and putting them in equation number 6 
uh, this is equation number 6, we get equation number 13. So, you could see that equation number 11, 12 and 13 actually represents coupled differential equations with u, v, w as unknown. I mean, uh, you can see in all these three equations uh, like 11, 12 and 13, u, v and w appears. Therefore, they are coupled. Okay? Now, for a, if we consider a specially uh, orthotropic symmetric laminate, this we can actually uncouple them because all these b terms are 0. Also, uh, for a special orthotropic laminate, this a16, a26, d16, d26, d26 are also 0. And for free vibration, there is no load. So, qx, y is also 0 and we obtain this equation number 14. Okay? Now, this is equation which is unknown in w, okay? which is the jet displacement. Okay? And considering a simply supported boundary conditions, we have already explained simply supported boundary condition. All the edges are actually simply supported. So, uh, at all the edges, w is equal to 0 as well as moment equal to 0. Okay? Uh, like in uh, along x axis, w is equal to 0 and mx equal to 0. Along y, it is uh, w is equal to 0 and my is equal to 0. Now, because this equation is actually in terms of uh, uh, w as unknown, therefore, this uh, uh, force boundary condition like mx equal to 0 is also expressed in terms of uh, displacement boundary condition. How? Because this is this we can done because we have considered a uh, symmetric laminate. Therefore, we can actually uncouple that m is equal to d k from the ABBD matrix. We can uncouple them. Therefore, we can write m x is equal to d 1 1 k x plus d 1 2 k y d 1 6 is 0 because we have considered specially orthotropic and m y is equal to d 1 2 k x plus d 2 2 k y and you can put this k x equal to uh, minus del square w del x square k y is equal to minus uh, uh, del square w del y square and we get this relations. Okay? And when you put this, uh, uh, so this is what the boundary conditions are, okay? four boundary conditions. Now, for free vibration, it is being harmonic in time. The solution with frequency omega is assumed to be of the form is where this w x y could be uh, the special distribution of w x y could be actually taken as a double sign series, which actually satisfies this simply supported boundary conditions. And when we put all uh, this, uh, we get these equations. Okay? We pu put this uh, 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 in actually equation number 14 in this equation. So, we get this. Okay? So, this is the frequency and where the various natural frequencies omega corresponding to defined mode shapes, okay? basically corresponding to defined uh, values of m and n, m and n are the number of half sine wave along x and y. Okay? And accordingly defined shapes uh, we write, this is the natural frequency. And you can clearly see that uh, here again, it is a function of d11, d12, d66 and d22. So, depending upon the values of these uh, elements of d matrix, they will be different. Okay? So, Fundamental natural frequency or the lowest frequency is obtained when m is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 and it is given by this. If we put m is equal to 1 and m is equal to n is equal to 1, we get this as the fundamental natural frequency. What does it mean? Suppose you have this plate, the first natural frequency will be corresponding to 1 half sine wave in the x direction, 1 half sine wave in the y direction. Okay? And, uh, so, we can compute. Now, of course, this is for a rectangular plate simply supported at all edges, symmetric, specially orthotropic laminate. Okay? Uh, similar uh, approach could be also uh, uh, applied to for other more general plate, uh, laminated plates. Maybe the equations will be more involved, okay? uh, but uh, the objective here has been to understand the factors which actually affect. You can clearly see here. Uh, 
uh, of course, it is decided by the dimensions okay, A, B and in addition more importantly it is actually the of course, I mean the uh, frequency will be decided by the stiffness and the mass. So, rho naught is the density and the stiffness here for this orthotropic plate is actually all these components d 1 1, d 1 2, d 6, 6 and d 2 2. So, you may actually compute the fundamental natural frequencies for again 2 laminates. Okay, one is all 0 degree 20 layers and another is uh, 0 90 symmetric laminate again 20 layer maybe for graphite epoxy laminates using this analytical solution and you may compare so that you can appreciate that how the natural frequencies actually vary with stacking sequence. You may take these properties for graphite epoxy, I mean why they are required? They are required to find out what is D using classical lamination theory. Okay? Using classical lamination theory, you can find out what is D. Maybe you can take uh, the ply thickness is same as 0.1 mm and you can see the difference. Okay? So, therefore, uh, in today's lecture we understood the buckling and uh, I mean free vibration of laminates though we have restricted our discussions to most simple cases of uh, rectangular laminated plate with symmetric and special orthotropic laminates, but then uh, I think we could understand that what are the factors actually influence in determination of the buckling load. Uh, in deciding the buckling load as well as in deciding the uh, natural frequencies of such plates. So, that in, in design, uh, if we have to design a particular component with a uh, particular requirement of uh, buckling load and the part, uh, then we can, uh, we can have the first hand idea that uh, how the stacking sequence should be. Similarly, if we have a requirement of uh, natural frequency uh, for a particular uh, uh, co I mean component. Uh, which is made up of say fiber reinforced uh, polymer composites, uh, then we at least we, we are in a position to understand that what are the factors which actually influence that and accordingly we may decide the stacking sequence of that particular laminate. Okay? Thank you, uh, we will stop our discussions here today.